And I just want to share with you, because I think it's really, you know, we're in uh, Romans, but I, I like the interaction and the asking of different things and, and sharing and so forth, because, you know, this is how we learn, you know. Uh, I learn a lot, too, when you ask questions and so forth, you know, so uh, feel free to continue to do that. Uh, a lot of times we... Uh, we don't get very far with our study, but the study's not, uh, again, we're not trying to get through a book, you know, and say, okay, what's next? Okay, <laughs> we're trying to, you know, that's it. We're not trying to get through something and say, what's next? We want to be led by the Spirit, and, you know, there'll be times maybe we only get to one verse in here, and there's a topic that comes up, something we're discussing, and we want a clear understanding of what's, what it's all about. So I just want to express that, that I found the last few, you know, a lot of the last classes were really energizing because I like the openness and people sharing and contributing to it, okay? Because again, um, I'm not preaching. This is a teaching and we want uh, class communication, which is really awesome here, okay? So we're looking at uh, Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 9. verse 9. Okay. Actually, we're going to pick up um, 8 and 9 from uh, Romans chapter 5, 8 and 9. Somebody like to read. Anybody? Romans 5. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Praise God. Thank you, Dolores. You know, and that's, uh, that's one of our verses here in the Kung Fu ministry, Romans 5, 8. You know, and, and you just look at that, and I have some things to share on it, but uh, God demonstrates his love towards us. You know, love. He's demonstrating it, and again, what's a good um, uh, definition of love? What would you say? We, we've talked about this many times, but love. You know, God demonstrates his love. And um, when you look at that, what's that mean to you? That he's demonstrating his love towards us, and then while, of course, the Bible verse says, while we're in sinners, Christ died for us. But he demonstrates his love. In other words, what is a good definition of love? Putting others above yourself. Okay? And God is demonstrating his love so awesomely by denying himself, just like we have the back of our Kung Fu shirt, becoming the nothing. You know, that's kind of where I got that out of this and uh, Philippians, where, where uh, uh, Jesus emptied himself and went to the cross. You see? And that's pure the purest of love, to deny yourself for someone, you know, okay, and see, Christ denied himself for us, and while we were in our sin, he died for us, and again, as we know, what he said on the cross, you know, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and again, not just those Roman soldiers, but all of us, you know, he died for us, and then verse 9, of course, says, much more than having now been justified by his blood, that word justified, that's where you get the word justification from. We're justified, we're made righteous, not within ourselves, but through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are justified not by what we can do for salvation, what he did for us, by demonstrating his love for us, denying himself, you know, going to the cross, you know, he was pure without sin, so we're justified by believing and having faith in what he did. As it says, by his blood he shall be saved through, from wrath through him. Okay, so right there you see salvation that, you know, we deserve wrath. You know, that's what we deserve. There's nothing any good in us. You know, we're not, you know, I like what it says in Isaiah. Uh, it says, my best works, I think it's Isaiah 64, 6, maybe. Uh, my 
best works are as filthy rags, you know. Uh, what we do as we follow the Lord, it's not us, it's the Holy Spirit working in and through us. Is anything good that we do, it's not really us, it's God. Okay? And this is what we have to understand. That's why it says, demonstrated his own love towards us while we were still sinners. He died for us much more than having now being justified by his blood. We're justified by what he did on the cross, shedding his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you think about that. You know, um, think about, you know, we talk about gratefulness and we just had Thanksgiving and going into Christmas and all being thankful for the Lord. You know, the thankfulness is so much that, you know, we deserved hell. You know, the Bible says, you know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So if you think about it, praise God, thank you, Jesus. When we're thanking the Lord, and we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior, you know, can you get any better than that? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Can you get any better than that? You know where you're going to go when you pass from this plane. I mean, you know, I've been reading up on some different uh, things and so forth, and, uh, you know, we have in our country uh, uh, nowadays, it's called humanism. Uh, okay, and humanism basically is that you're a pretty good person, you know, uh, you have, you're morally good, which defies scripture, because scripture says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, okay, you're morally good, and uh, you just want to live a decent life, and just do the best you can, and, and you know, you basically figure it out on your own, you know, which is co totally contradictory to God, okay, and they don't believe in a life after this. I mean, think about that. What kind of hope is that? I mean, if I didn't think there was a life after this, I wouldn't want to go on every day. I mean, why would, you know, that's what keeps you going, knowing that this is temporary and this is, your, you're passing through. You're here on a mission. You're here on an assignment. Okay, and God, you're in God's hands and he's in control of your life and he guides you in direction. I don't think I could go through a day without that assurance. And yet this, uh, faith, this uh, philosophy called humanism, that's what they, they believe. They're close to, uh, in a sense, atheism, which again, uh, don't believe in, in God. But uh, when you really understand all that, that's, that, all that really is, everyone, is rebellion against God. Because the Bible tells us, and we, we're not going there, that uh, in Romans, that all man knows there's a God, I've shared this many times, from creation. We're just in, people are just in rebellion and they want to have their own thoughts, their own this, or they basically want to be God themselves. And then when they, then the, uh, think about it, they, humans, they want to do their own thing, but how do they respond when it all crumbles? You know what I mean? When it all just falls apart. You know, where's their hope? You know, it's, it's so sad. But anyway, Praise God, but we, we're not, we don't have that. We got the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and I have some stuff here in my book here. It says, God loves us and did everything necessary to save us, even when we were against him and were servants of sin and death and Satan. Okay, we know that God has completely accepted us through Jesus Christ and his death for us. He has declared us righteous through faith in Christ. Knowing this, we can be even more certain that he, will, that he will save us from the control and future judgment of sin. In other words, there's going to be um, a judgment. Okay, we're going to stand, I won't get too in depth with this, but as followers of Jesus Christ, you will stand in front of the Lord and give an account for your life, and you will receive rewards for according to what you've done on this planet according to how you walked with him and, and did according to his will and, and did what he called you to do. Then there's something else that the unsaved are going to have. It's called the great right throne judgment. Where they're going to have to give an account, you know, and the Lord's going to say, 
Why should I let you in, you might ask? And what are you going to say? Well, I was morally okay. I wasn't that bad. I did this or I did that. But, you know, I went to church occasionally. I gave here and there. And the Lord will say, be gone. I never knew you. That's the great white throne judgment. That's only for those who never received Jesus Christ and rejected it. And, you know, the more someone hears that gospel and the more they reject it, the more they're accountable for that. Because they're hearing it and they keep rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. You know, so. Uh, but we won't have that. That's the great white throne judgment there. Okay. Okay, let's read verse 10 of chapter 5 here. Verse 10. It says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now see that? Now, now there you're into reconciliation. The word reconciliation, you hear a lot of times you will hear people say, well, we're justified and then we're reconciled. You know, we're justified by what he did and we're reconciled. We're put back into a relationship with him through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because we have to understand, until I shared this many times and we know this, until you accept Jesus Christ, you know, you're his enemy. That's what the Bible says right here. It says, um, uh, it says, for when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through death of his son. You hear that? So that's telling us that at one point, before I knew Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I was God's enemy. See? That's why an unsaved person, you know, I've heard people say, you know, uh, I pray to God and I, I don't worship the way you do, but I know God and I know God knows me and all this here. Of course God knows you, but you don't really know God. You know, until you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're an enemy of God. You know, the Bible tells us that. So we need to, and so what happens is by our faith and believing, to justify through his blood, we become reconciled back into, this is why I preach every time, like I shared, I sound like a broken record, but I share about a relationship because we're reconciled back to him, and if we're reconciled back to him, that means I'm not practice, I'm not reconciled back to a religion. I'm reconciled back into a relationship with him. Because you have to understand what happened in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve originally had a relationship with God. They walked with him. Could you imagine that? They walked with him in the garden there. They talked with him. Just like that song, you know. And uh, the thing is, when they sinned, they broke that relationship with him. So the relationship with them. So the relationship's been broken. But now, back in the Old Testament, again, before Jesus came on the scene, okay, a person was called righteous upon their faith in their walk with God. Faith in obedience was in the Old Testament. It was faith and obedience. You know, people ask me about that. Now, Jesus has been on the scene. Now it's believing in Jesus Christ as the perfect lamb that takes away the sin of the world. You know? So again, we're reconciled back in to a, re you gotta hear this, into a relationship. You're not reconciled into a religion. Okay? You hear me say that over and over and over because, you know, um, that's just kind of like, um, Stereotype. It's like this, too. Well, are you going to church on Sunday? You're at church. Should be really, if you really want to understand, are you going to worship service this week? You going to worship service? Because you're in the church. But see how, I, I guess I would say Americanized everything got, so to speak. Then we say, I gotta go to church. Well, I'm going to worship service, okay? Or, um, you know, I'm going to church services, okay? Because the people, are, we are the church. The believers are the church, okay? It's not, again, as I shared many times, it's not the building. This is a church building, okay? But when no Christians are here, it's a building, 
Okay? But it's a worship center when the followers of Jesus Christ are in. And again, we're worshiping the Lord because we're in a relationship, bless you, we're in a relationship with the Lord. We're not in a religious uh, uh, method with the Lord. Okay? We are not. So, again, at this time of the year, this is a perfect example. And I, I guess I kind of say, say this so much because I, I wanted to go into use and all that. Uh, I'm so little New Jersey, I say you guys. You know, I say like that, you know, you guys, that Jersey talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I kind of want that to go into you. What a perfect time of year. Nancy, somebody may approach you and say, Nancy, can I talk to you? You're a very religious person. And Nancy has an opportunity to say, I'm not religious, I'm in a relationship with Jesus. What? Excuse me? You're religious? No, no. I'm in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then that, then that causes them to possibly ask more questions. And then you think, what are you talking about a relationship? The world as a whole doesn't accept that. No. Absolutely. No, no. Some of the church doesn't accept that. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You know, because that's right. Uh, that's, uh, that's so right, Travis. Because, you know, we get caught up in, in systematic rules and this and that. we got to follow different things. But again, uh, you talk about what the church is. The church should be guided by the Holy Spirit, which is, again, in that relationship with Jesus Christ, praying and seeking the guidance of the Lord, how he wants us to walk with him as a church body of believers. That's how it comes together. Um, uh, nothing should be done without, without seeking the guidance of Christ, because, again, it's a relationship. That's it. But exactly what uh, Travis is saying is so true. And again, you know, there are people like, you know, they'll, they'll talk all about God, but then as soon as you start to bring the word Jesus in, you have a whole different discussion going on there. Okay? But uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I am the way. You see, not, not just, uh, a lot of times it's too much generalizing God. Because God could be, you know, I just, on the way here, I was just the radio, and God was talking about the Islam faith and, and uh, how, uh, that's your, uh, with God and so forth. And Islam, people can't understand how a God uh, would come and, and make himself in the form of a human being. The Islam, people, they, they can't comprehend that thought there. You know, and they can't comprehend God being three persons in one. They can't comprehend the Trinity either. You know, so uh, it's just, uh, it's out there. And again, like you're saying, in our society, this is why it's so important we really want to talk about a relationship because that's what it's all about. It's about a relationship. And the Bible is our, our love letter, our guide, uh, our guide to, within the truth, and it's a love letter from the Lord to us, is what scripture really is. Okay, so as we read uh, verse 10 there, we know that even when we were God's enemies, the Lord Jesus died for us. Through his death, we were reconciled to God and were brought into oneness. Again. Okay, somebody read um, Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Right. For in the gospel, a righteous, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Hear that? In other words, Paul is saying there. He's not ashamed of the gospel. And, and again, as followers of Jesus Christ, not that we're ashamed, but I think that we're, I think Christians today are too timid, too sudden there, you know, not willing to be bold and step out and, and uh, you know, proclaim their faith. You know, and, and again, just like what Travis said, uh, they're righteous through their faith. See? That's where, uh, you have to understand, righteousness comes through the faith and belief in Jesus Christ. 
Within ourselves, we are not righteous. We are sinners. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. In other words, that's the Holy Spirit. We are righteous through the blood of Christ, that Holy Spirit. So it's so awesome if you try to really think about it. The Spirit, God's Spirit lives inside of us. You know? We're not just empty vessels. We're not just practicing a religion. You know, his spirit lives inside of us. And we're righteous through the blood that he shed. And it's our faith. Our faith. And again, who gives us our faith? Christ. You know, he's the one. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just for you to believe that Jesus died on the cross and accept him as your Lord and Savior, that's God's grace. God's given you the ability to believe that. That's why I love the word it says in here too. I've chosen you. You did not choose me. We sit around the table tonight. We didn't choose Christ. He chose you. That's extraordinary. You know, you think about that. That God chose you and he's got a plan and a purpose for you. And he designed you the way he wanted you to be designed to fulfill that plan. That's something that, again, Christians don't even meditate on that kind of stuff. You know, we just kind of, many times I think we just go through it and we get caught up in the world just like the lost people. But we have something extraordinary more than, than the lost people. This is why, just like Travis said, we should not be ashamed of the gospel. And I don't think it's really a shame. I think many times we don't wrap our minds around the truth of the gospel enough. You follow what I'm saying? We don't wrap our minds around what we really have. What do we really have? And see, it's so important, especially now we're going into the Christmas season. What an opportunity, you know. I mean, you got families gathering and half of them don't know Christ and this and that and everybody's partying and this and that. What a, what a time to share your faith and share that you like to talk and you want to talk about a personal relationship you have with God. To even state that, you know, put it in those manner that you like to share something, you know, uh, about your personal relationship with your Savior. I mean, that, that, that's so awesome. And, and uh, you know, it's something we need to do. And, um, uh, you know, keep me in prayer. Uh, we're going to be going to Florida um, uh, for Christmas time. You know, we won't be here. And I'm going to see some family. And some of that family don't know the Lord. You know, they know what we're all about, but, you know, I just have to take opportunities to put it out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, that's it, you know. So, so when I go here, I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> that's it. Because we have to take the opportunities. You know, that's it. That's it. Because, you know, you hear so much of People passing away, you know. I just heard uh, recently, um, uh, I used to watch this as a, a younger days, because uh, I'm in martial arts, everybody knows Chuck Norris, right? The show Texas Ranger, mm -hmm. the fellow Trevet that played on he just died. The, uh, to play Jimmy, whose name was Clarence, uh, he just died at 66 years old. And the thing is, they're not revealing how he died. So, you know, that, you wonder, you know, why, I don't personal, but, you know, whether you had cancer or whatever, he was just 66. Um, and then I just heard of another uh, celebrity who just passed away, uh, Angela, she was 71. But, uh, Christy Allen. Christy Allen. Yeah, that's it, Christy Allen, yeah, she played in different shows. Yeah, she was 71. So, you know, people pass them all the time, you know? And, uh, that's why it's so important to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So, okay, let's continue with some Bible words here. Uh, uh, can I have somebody read Hebrews 10, 12? Hebrews 10, 12.
time this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. And of course, we know it's talking about Jesus. You know, one sacrifice for sin, what to say? He sat down at the right hand of the Father. So where is Jesus right now? The right hand of the Father. Interceding. Interceding for us, right? Here you go, Thomas. Interceding for us. And what's going on in our world? He's left the Holy Spirit on planet Earth. The Holy Spirit is on planet Earth. And he's left us as his ambassadors, his messengers, to proclaim it. And then when we proclaim it, the Holy Spirit comes in tact with that. And this is how people come to Christ. You know, it's amazing. And um, this is what it's all about. So, Okay, we're going to read, we're back in Romans 5, verse 11. It says, and not only that, but also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received a reconciliation. Okay, that's just tying in for verse 10, that we're reconciled back to God, that uh, we rejoice. And again, there's joy. Okay, now we're talking about joy. I'm going to be sharing on that this week in the message there on joy. But, um, you know, we rejoice in the fact that we're reconciled back to Jesus Christ through his blood on the cross. Okay. We are joyful and absolutely confident through the Lord Jesus' death. We are no longer separated from God. We have eternal oneness with God. Okay, let's read a couple of verses here. Uh, somebody read Philippians 1 6. One six. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now, you know that's so powerful what he just said? You know? We'll complete it. In other words, <clears throat> that's that's awesome. Now I'm going to share with this what, what that speaks to me about. God will not take me home to his kingdom until he completes in me what he wants done. He will not take any of us home until he completes what he wants done through us. That's what that verse just talks about. To completion. Think about that. Until your assignment's done. You know, you know, that's why there's a, sa a saying and you got to put it in the right context. We're indestructible until the Lord takes us. Because we're on an assignment. And again, we're trying to spread it until it is completed. You see, when he's done, you know, like you see uh, people that uh, don't live as long or whatever, evidently, as they knew the Lord, their assignment was completed and the Lord took them. That's all that he had He had for them at their point in their lives. This is the assignment that he had for that person. And they're taken. You see what I'm saying? So, again, our lives will be here until our assignment's done. Are we talking about believers? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> uh, yeah, this pertains to the people that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But, Think about this. This is the love that God has. Where it's not God's will that any should perish. The scripture tells us that, you know, he's long-suffering. There are people out there walking the streets that are lost in the sauce, that are so lost, and God's still calling them, drawing them to himself. That's why, you know, he loves them so much that, uh, uh, you know, some of them, they, they haven't been taken out. They're still living and so forth because God is wants them to be saved. But yet, again, they have a choice, but it's because it's not his will that any should perish. You see what I'm saying? Okay? All right. Let's, um, somebody read, we'll go to Romans 8. We're not up this far yet, but this is just a cross reference. 8, 38, and 39. Uh, this, this is really good also here. 
Okay. Uh, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, not height nor depth, not any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So yeah, nothing can separate us. Then if you go over to 35, here, it says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, power of the sword, you know, and again, then what Connie read, nothing can separate us. Angels, nor angels, nor principalities, powers of darkness, not, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. And you know, think about that. How can it if that's, if his spirit lives inside of you? Can't. Holy Spirit lives inside of you. See, and you cannot lose the salvation. It cannot come out. That spirit lives inside of you and you will <laughs> sin. You may walk away and you'll get chastised and you'll grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, it tells us in Ephesians, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, when we sin, when we do what we're not supposed to do, we grieve the Spirit, which is the conviction, the guilt, the horribleness. Or, you know, you, you feel like a crumb, you feel... Oh, man, you know, you just feel terrible about yourself because that's the spirit inside of you, okay? Because, um, you know, unsaved people don't have that kind of conviction. They more or less try to justify the means there, okay? But nothing can separate us from the love of God. Again, all these things we're talking about, more things to be thankful for. God gives believers the assurance of complete deliverance from the reign of sin and death because we are no longer in Adam, but in Christ. See, we're no longer with Adam. We're in Jesus Christ. Okay? <clears throat> Again, Christian is the new person. Okay? This is like I always try to share. It's not even about nationality. You know, whether a person is German, African American. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And that's something hard in our, in our culture, in our world, still to understand. You know, uh, and just like, you know, I'll just touch on what Travis said for a second, things in churches and so forth. You know, um, it's sad to be like this, but there are some churches, some places where, you know, if it's African Americans, it's all, t it's all the bodies. You know, not, you know, it's not really supposed to be that way. You know, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. You know, when we had our church plant, we had a multicultural. You know, we had all, you know, they were all, God loves them all, he created them all, he has a plan for them all, and he wants to save them all. And he's called us to minister to them. So it's uh, no longer, as the Bible even says in Greece, what's it say? No, no longer Greek or Jew or, uh, uh, you know, Gentile. You know, we're all one. It's called Christian. Christian. And a Christian is what? A follower of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what a Christian is. Okay. It says, believers can be certain that they have been delivered from the controlling power of sin and death because they are no longer controlled by Adam. Okay. Um, somebody read uh, Romans chapter 6, 6 to 8. Since we're there. Romans chapter 6, 6 to 8. serve sin. For he hath, for he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. That's powerful. You know that's powerful. She just went there. Um, you know I like that. Just to repeat that. Knowing this that our old man was crucified with him. You know, that's why I like that Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but what? Christ lives in me. Think about that. That's what Paul was saying. It's no longer. See, this is what it's all about, everyone. The Christian life is you dying to self and letting Jesus take over. That's the Christian life. 
That's the ultimate goal. And he works in and through us. And he's given us all different abilities, but we use these abilities and these skills to glorify God. This is what we do. This is the whole basic thing. You know, we use our abilities to glorify Christ and, and uh, to let others see Jesus Christ in us. That's why that, that verse is so powerful there that uh, the old man was crucified with him. The old nature, the old man, it was, it's, it's done, it's gone. The more that we grow in our faith, the more we can walk in the newness of our faith. This is why you need Christian growth. This is why, you know, uh, once again, I keep going back, but it, it has to. A relationship is, listen to me, everyone. If you're in a relationship, you're going to want to <coughs> talk with that person daily. That's where reading of the Word comes in. You're going to want to have that relationship with them. So you, you get the Bible, and you start reading it, and you start praying. You ask the Lord to speak to you, help you to understand it. How is this... What is this a reference to me, Lord? What are you trying to teach me? And see, your the Spirit will start to reveal these truths to you and help you understand. This is why we need daily Bible reading. Think about this. If you're in a relationship with Jesus, you don't want to talk to him once a week, do you? <laughs> Just talk to him once a week or once every couple weeks. You know, you want to, you know, if you're in a relationship with somebody. You know, look at look at look at our our generation. We're in the generation of technology. Text, 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 texting, texting. People are, are you know, it's funny. You walk down the street, people are with a group of people and they're texting people. <laughs> they're talking. They're they're having conversation with multiple people, right? They're they're walking with a couple of people. They're texting people. They're communicating with probably two, three, four people sometimes. You see? Now, you take it to God's word. If it's a relationship, how often do we talk with the Lord? You know, and we talk with him, but we need to read his word and let him speak to us and see how does this relate to me in life? See, that's, that's how you interpret. How is this relating to me in life? This is what it's all about. See, and then the Holy Spirit will, will speak to you. He may speak to you in a psalm. He may, he may be praying. Uh, and the Lord opens up your heart and takes you to a particular psalm. And, and you're, you're struggling with something. Psalms are very good when you're struggling in life situations. And it'll take you to psalm, you know. Uh, uh, you know, Psalm 139. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, you were made in secret. In other words, God knows all about you. He formed you before you were even knew. You were going to exist in all this here. And so God speaks when you're feeling down and trying to Lord. You know, the Bible speaks, but it's a relationship. It constantly is. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. And a relationship, too, is not having to be forced to do it. You know what I mean? Like, well, I got to get out the Bible. Guess what? It's at 2 o'clock. It's my Bible time. Got to do it. You know, don't live your life like that. You know, um, just, you know, it's a lifestyle. You may be doing something, the Lord speaking to you something. And you might have an opportunity to just go to a passage in the Bible and just start at any point in day. But you don't really want to uh, set a clock up. This is my Bible time. This is because I'm going to tell you something. Something will always come up where if you said, 2 o'clock, I'm going to do Bible reading. Well, 2 o'clock, the phone's going to ring. 2 o'clock, somebody's going to be at the door. 2 o'clock, you got another appointment to go on. Right? That's what goes on. You know what I mean? So you got to do it as the Lord needs. I remember studying the martial arts. I had a teacher in, um, in New York City, a um, Chinese fellow. And uh, same thing. I said, when, when should I practice? He's, I said, should I, like, make... Three o'clock on every Thursday and Friday, I'm going to practice. And my teacher would say, "No, you don't got that like that." He said, "I got the accent, right?" He said, "You have to be less time. Have to be less time. You practice when all different time, any time. It's lifestyle, you know. Like it's you know, but because he said something always come up. You and you don't practice, you know. And he he was funny too. He never liked um, uh, workout equipment." 
I had a teacher in New York, never liked working. <coughs> I remember one time I had uh, my studio and I had this um, uh, stomach machine, a machine that worked your abs and so forth. And, you know, uh, I spent a pretty good amount of money on this thing, right? Had it in my studio and, and my teacher from New York, he come over to my studio one time and I was all excited to show my stomach machine and all this here. And, and uh, he says, ah, don't like. He said, what happened? Machine breaks, you don't work out no more. Machine breaks, you don't work out. <laughs> so I said, well, you got a point, but it does work and I'm used to it. But anyway, I'm going here. But, uh, you know, there's a character. <laughs> But uh, again, we we go to the Lord with a lifestyle. It's a it's a way of life as we as we um, read the Word and we seek His guidance. Okay, uh, somebody read First Corinthians fifteen twenty two. Fifteen twenty two. Fifteen twenty two. First Corinthians fifteen twenty two. <clears throat> Anybody can do that. So as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Okay, very simple verse, but puts it out there. You know what I mean? You know, Adam is death. Christ is life. That's a good statement right there. Adam is death. Christ is life. Right there. We all die in Adam there. We have eternal life in Christ. Why, says I have considered, says why were Cain and Abel born outside the garden? Why were they born sinners who would die? These things happened because they were the sons of Adam. We also were born into Adam's family. Therefore, we too were born sinners with bodies that were destined to die. As Adam's descendants, we were included in Adam's sin and in the punishment of death that God placed in Adam. Therefore, when Adam was put out of the garden away from the tree of life, it meant that all people had to die. Interesting, right? Think about that. See? Because he sinned. The wages of sin is death. Death. You see? So in Adam, there's death. You know, in Jesus, there's life. Okay? That's so interesting to, to understand that. That's why they were born outside of the garden. They were born sinners who would have died. These things happened because they were sons of Adam. Okay? And this is they why... Were, they were locked out of Yeah. Yeah, they were, they were dangerous, right? You wouldn't let them, you know, I found that, you know, I was sharing with somebody in that statement there, too, that shows the love of God. Because he didn't want them back coming back in there because the tree of life was there. Yeah, interesting. You know what I mean? And they could have, you know, he had the plan. You know, so his plan was to keep them out of there, not to go back in there. And, uh, you know, that's part of the great plan there, you know, that because um, they could have been eaten from that tree of life and still, you know, eventually again they die. And that's again, too, why, you know, it's interesting, when we die, we don't, we don't die, die, we're after from the body present with the Lord. Remember, as I shared this, mm -hmm. death means separation. That's the word death, separation. Now, biblically, is, uh, what happens with ourselves is the moment we, per se, separate here, die, our soul goes up to be with the Lord. Our soul goes to be, but our body is sin. This is why our body ages and gets old, because it's sin. Okay, but we're going to have a new body with the Lord Jesus Christ. You say we'll have a, a new body. That uh, Pastor Ephesians 1, 4 says, For he has chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. 
and before the foundation he had a plan. He had a plan, right? He, that's right. Very good. Before the foundation, before you know all of this, he, he had this great plan before anything else existed. Already, what was going to go on, and he had you planned to be here at this time on planet Earth because he loves you and he has an assignment for you. And he chose to work in and through you. I find that extraordinary. He's not just our God and our Lord, he's our Father. And we'll close right there tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise and thank you for uh, our lesson tonight, Father God, as we uh, studied through the Book of Romans here, Lord, Father God. And Lord, I pray as we go through this time of the year, the, through Christmas time, that uh, we have golden opportunities to, to share your word, Father, and just share about a relationship, Father. Um, that uh, Not about a religion, but a relationship with you, Lord, Father God. I pray that you would bless each one, Father, as they came here tonight, and take them home safely, Lord. We praise and thank you for, for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone.